Novation agreements, the sexiest new term in real estate investing. Guys, it's Rick with Flip with Rick. Guys, in this video, I'm going to break down the facts of what a novation agreement is and the purpose of how to use it in your real estate investing. But before I get into it, do me a favor, smash that like button, hit that subscribe button to continue to receive the absolute best information on wholesaling novation. Guys, I hear this term everywhere. Now I've been doing real estate a long, long time. So I'm going to kind of bust through the hype and give the facts and then I'll give you my opinion at the end of this video. So first, we got to break down the word. So the word novate means to replace. It literally means to replace with a new contract. Novate. So if you're going to do a novation, it means you are replacing one contract for another contract. Without that element, you do not have a novation. That's a fact. Number two, we now have to compare what is the difference between a novation and an assignment of contract. So I'm going to break down the difference. So if you have never heard of an assignment of contract, it simply means you can write a contract on a property, make the contract assignable in the language. And once that contract's assignable, you can there turn around and sell your contract to a new buyer. Now, your new buyer basically signs a separate one or two page agreement called an assignment agreement, which allows them to transfer my rights to them. They can take over the new price, the terms, everything, and they can close on that contract without consent of the original seller because consent's already given in the contract. I'm gonna tell you nine times out of 10, this is what you do in wholesaling. It is the best tool available and it works. Now, it doesn't work in every case scenario, but for the most part, if you're just starting out in wholesaling, this is the route you guys wanna take. Now, let's talk about an ovation. A novation means you entered into an agreement, if it's assignable or not, and say you didn't wanna fulfill the contract and you wanted someone else to take your place. So I go out and find another uh, buyer. So say I find Bob. I said, Bob, you want to take my place um, in my contract. I, if you're okay with the price and this, I can go back and talk to the seller and we can novate it and we can do a novation. So simply means I'm going to replace myself with Bob. And in order to do that, we're going to have to cancel my contract write a new contract with Bob and get consent of everybody involved in the transaction. Guys, that's it. That's a novation agreement. A novation is actually an act and nine times out of 10, it happens naturally. Sometimes you have to replace the buyer with a new buyer. Now, the advantage of a novation is when you do the replacement is myself, Rick, the original buyer of the contract, is now relieved of all and any financial or liability in regards to that contract. Why? Because the original one's canceled and then there's a new buyer. If your seller agrees to do that and the buyer wants to do that, you have a novated contract, that's it, okay? So I'm gonna go into a little bit of case law here and I looked it up, just clarification. There is a case law in the state of Illinois regarding um, novation of contract. And for a novation to occur, a true novation in the eyes of the law, because in the end, if you have a problem and it winds up being a lawsuit, then it always reverts back to law. There are four things required for a novation. Guys, this is fact. This is not my opinion. This is case law. I'm not, the, the case law is so long, I'm not even going to read it out, but it's from Illinois. Number one, you need a contract, also known as a PSA, which is a purchase and sales agreement. Okay, you cannot novate a contract unless there's an existing contract. It's not a novation then. Okay, number one. So you have a, a purchase and sales agreement. The second one, you create a new contract as a proposal to replace the old contract. So you write it up and your new buyer says, yeah, I agree to those terms. And then I'm going to bring that contract over to the seller and make sure they're going to be okay with it. Okay. Number three, we have to come up with a vehicle to cancel 
the original purchase and sales agreement, meaning you have to have a document in writing that relieves you of all financial and any type of liability responsibility to that contract. You'll need the consent of the seller and obviously yourself to do that. You only do that if you got a new buyer. And then the last thing is that new contract now has to be validated. It's going to have to be signed by the buyer, the seller, make sure there's a cancellation in place. If those four things occur, you have a novation of contract. Anything else, you know what, I'm just, I'm gonna tell you the truth here. It's a novation of contract. You, those four things have to happen. Otherwise, it's not. What happens is novation is this sexy new word, and I'm just going to give you the truth. It's a sexy way to sell you a course, okay? I've looked around for me to get these fancy uh, novation agreements. It basically cost you between five and eight thousand dollars. And what they're trying to tell you is I have a novation agreement. You can give the homeowner and here's the advantage. Here's what all the course guys are selling you on. You don't have to close on the property. You have no financial responsibility on the contract. You have no closing costs. This works on very difficult sellers. Guys, uh, there, there is no trick to this, okay? There's no such thing as a novation agreement unless there's an existing agreement. I don't have privy to these documents. I work with a lot of lawyers and I'm just telling you, I, I'm, I'm, calling, I'm calling the hype on this. Um, it is actually one of the hottest search things on the internet and that's why you guys are hearing video and I'm here to tell you the truth. In almost 20 years of doing real estate, I've done novation of contract. They happen naturally. Typically when we did short sales, that's how we did it. But we had to have an original agreement. We had to have a new agreement and we had to have consent of all parties and we had to cancel that original agreement. That's simply innovation. Anything else is a lever to, in my opinion, to sell you a course. I've heard from very two prominent people that I actually respect in the business and they have opposing views. And, and so this is where it gets really confusing. So one says, a novation agreement really only works on really pretty good properties that they're not quite there on the price and you can basically find another buyer to substitute your agreement and then the spread you capture because you don't have to close on it, that's how it works. Then I've heard another one whereas this only works on properties that need massive amount of rehab. Honestly guys, I don't know what the answer is because I don't waste my time on a, like a lot of this stuff. I will tell you this, if you're looking to enter into an agreement with a homeowner and put up 50 or $100,000 in repair and you do not have the property titled in your business's name or heck, even your personal name or LLC, whatever it is, or for that matter, even a trust, you are at massive risk. Let me get this straight. If you have a difficult seller that's stuck on a certain price, and by the way, most of them are that way, that, that's just the truth, is you bring out this sexy new term and maybe this is your first deal or your second deal and this is where it's very dangerous. Novation agreement should not be done by someone who's brand new in the business. Why? Because you don't know the right questions to ask. And I get it, you can get mentoring and coaching, they're gonna teach you how to do it. But remember, you're the one on the hook when you do this stuff. If you enter into an agreement with a homeowner that's being unrealistic with their price, why on earth would you ever wanna partner up with them risk all your financial well-being to do the repairs on the property. I get it. By the way, you can't get a hard money loan on it because it's technically not your property. So you got to use your money or like a private money. And most of us starting out don't have options like this. So you're probably going to use your money. And let me ask you this. What happens if the property doesn't sell for the correct price? Meaning say you put $100,000 into it and say there's a $200,000 mortgage and the property only sells for like 280. Who's gonna lose out on it? You're gonna lose out. And that's the problem with this type of agreement. I've seen these agreements where they say, hey, um, I have the seller sign a novation agreement. Well, it's truly not a novation agreement unless you're going to replace that contract. Now, I know there's some really slick stuff out there, but the reality is most of these homes we deal with, about 70% of US homeowners have a mortgage on it. So the fact you think you're gonna get paid first is non-relevant. If there's a mortgage in place, they are gonna get paid first. And those of you go, wow, just get a hard money loan to do it. 
hard money people don't like to be in a second position. That's the other reason this doesn't really work. And honestly, if you have a homeowner that's just completely unrealistic and you think this is a way to get over on them, this is why we have so much regulation coming down our throats in this business. Guys, I'm all about being creative and solving problems and I'm all for it. But when we present a novation agreement, and if you think there's one document that can do everything we just talked about, it doesn't exist without replacing an existing contract. Talk to any lawyer and run it by it. There is gonna be no one agreement. Now, if what they're trying to do is sell you a course so you partner up with that homeowner, then you're doing either a joint venture with the homeowner or you're coming out with some sort of profit split. I can tell you this, if you're gonna put more than $10,000 on a property without having 100% absolute control of that property being deeded into your company or some sort of trust you control, you are at risk. End of story. I've done this so many times, guys. What if the property doesn't sell for the right price? What if your seller decides to not sell at all and they don't wanna do it? I know what you guys are gonna say. You're gonna go, hey, we got a power of attorney. I can tell you this, power of attorneys can be challenged. And so if you're in control, say you, you're doing your construction and you pad the numbers, say you, you say construction's 100, say it's 100 and you pad it at 120, and then you hire a realtor, you know, what if the realtor is like one of your family members? Like my wife's one of my realtors. So now 6% is going to the realtor, maybe half of that goes to your team. Then you have a construction cost. A homeowner goes, listen, I think I'm getting abused in this. They can file a petition and then the court, if they feel you are not doing your fiduciary responsibility, they can assign an intern person to take over to see everything out. And I've seen this before. I'm not trying to scare you. I'm just saying, guys, there's a lot going on in Ovation Agreement. I don't think it really has a place in wholesaling. It's more of an advanced creative financing strategy. I always saw them when uh, we did short sales and they were the right fit because it took months to negotiate with the bank and then we had to replace one contract with the other one and you had to get everyone's consent, even the bank's consent. If we have a difficult home seller, the fact that you think you can have one novation agreement that allows you to partner up with that homeowner, there might be that document, but having a document, a contract titled novation agreement and no novation exists, that just seems dangerous to me. I'm not hating on the people doing it, like knock yourself out, you're making a profit. The problem is when you come across a problem, how are you gonna deal with it? Because in real estate, it's not a matter of if you get sued, it's when if you do enough contract. Guys, also keep in mind that any type of novation agreement, they're going to try to put in a power of attorney, um, which you wanna review with a lawyer and you wanna review with your title company. A lot of title companies have real problems with power of attorneys and they can be challenged in court, so you could lose control on that. Um, you're also gonna have to record a lien. You wanna involve a lawyer whenever you record a lien on the property because you can be at risk for defamation of the title if you do not know what you're doing. And recording liens is something you don't wanna do lightly because if you don't do it correctly, you don't get the signatures witnessed, you don't get it notarized, you can have an invalid lien. So if you put 100 grand in the property and you didn't do it correctly, you could be at risk for that money. And then last but not least, to have a novation happen, you have to enter into some sort of original contract, which we call the PSA, which is a purchase and sales agreement. Without that, there is no novation. Guys, I, I honestly think novation, listen, novation is a strategy that exists forever in real estate. It is much more familiar in the commercial space with complicated leases and fixed assets that go along with the property. But now we've moved it over into single family homes and I saw it when we did short sales and it made complete sense and it happened naturally. Now we're talking about approaching homeowners that are difficult and you're basically using a novation strategy to think you can partner up with the homeowner. Think about this, if the house doesn't sell for the right targeted price and that homeowner gets difficult, what are you gonna do? And if you're gonna spend more than 10 grand on a property, especially if it's your own money, I, I, I advise strongly against this tactic. Wholesaling works, guys, and that's what I want to get you started. I'm not doing this video to scare you, I'm just telling you, I hear Novation popping up on my feed all the time. What is it, what is it, what is it? Everybody wants to copy this document. 
If you truly want to do a novation strategy, sit down with a lawyer in your state and tell them what you want to do. And if you want to write an original agreement and then replace it with something else, go for it. If you want to do the option route, which seems a lot cleaner to me, but I'm out here to advise on how to do all your creative financing. I'm a wholesaling guy. I want to teach you wholesaling strategies. Of the amount of deals I've done this, there's probably less than 3% and they happen naturally. So guys, I'm telling you, novation agreements is nothing more than a fancy word for substituting one contract for the, for the another with the entire consent of all parties involved. Any other labeling of it, in my opinion, is so you will buy a course to learn their secrets. And what do I, guys, what do I tell you guys about wholesaling? There's no secrets. Novation's been around for as long as real estate's been around. For novation to happen, there has to be a replacement of the contract. Anything else, in my opinion, you're being sold, so you'll buy a course, so you'll get their secret, and you are not gonna be happy when you get the secret because, in my opinion, well, the fact is, it's much more complicated than that. You got power of attorneys, you got liens, you got a purchase and sales agreement. Guys, don't buy into this hype. It is a shiny object syndrome. If you need to replace your contract with another one and you have a good rapport with the seller, it is nothing more than asking permission to replace your contract with another one. Let the seller know what the benefit to them is. And that is a novation agreement. So let's cap it off here, guys. If you have a question about novation agreements, I'm happy to take them on. I'm just telling you, nobody talks about when a novation agreement goes south. And without a substitute of contract, in my opinion, you don't have a novation agreement. You have a partnership with a homeowner. And guys, if you met a homeowner off your marketing and they're terribly emotionally with you, you're seeing their best foot forward. What are you going to do with the closing table when they're not happy with their cut of the pie? They're going to come after you and it's going to tie up all your money and it's going to be a problem. Guys, assignment of contract still works. A novation is not a replacement for a assignment of contract. And guys, if you're just starting out, please get advice from people that do this business that are not selling you a course on this secret new strategy. Novation agreements, guys. Tell me what you think. Are you utilizing them? And I get it. And for those of you that are going to go, hey, you know, you're going to be my hater. Hey, Rick, I've done 30 or 40 agreements on uh, Novation. I get, then keep doing it. Eventually, you'll see what I'm talking about. So I would never risk anything over $10,000 without 100% control of the property and a power of attorney is not enough control to put your finances at risk. I don't care if it's your money, a hard money partner or a soft money, guys, don't do it. Tell me what you think about novation agreements. Tell me if you agree with what I'm saying and understand the first part of the video, everything I told you are the facts of novation. They, it, it's, it's case law, end of story. You need four elements to have a novation. Without them, you don't have one. So are novation agreements being used as a substitute to JV with emotional home sellers that are not realistic on their price? I don't want to be part of that one because I cannot risk that kind of money when I do it. There's sometimes you just have to walk away if it doesn't work. So not every deal works. You cannot create deals sometimes. And that's just my opinion on it. So guys, tell me what you think. Put in the comments, are you using Novation Agreements? Have you heard all this hype? I think it's just this fancy new sexy word in real estate investing. So you'll buy courses, so you'll get the secret and you'll be better than the other person. Guys, I've been around 20 years. There's no more secrets in this business. Talk to your local lawyer in your state if you have questions about Novation Agreement and get the facts. Guys, this is Rick Gim with Flip with Rick. Guys, hit that subscribe button to continue to receive the absolute best information available on wholesaling on the internet today. This is Rick Gim with Flip with Rick, and I'll see you soon.